let's talk about the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Not the current one, but a new one. We need a replacement span. After years of studies showing traffic will only worsen, we've had enough. Did you know that it's almost too late? Too late to begin a plan that will save commuters, vacationers, tourists, and locals from hours of traffic gridlock? While we sit back and watch while options are discussed and required studies are done, we have to realize that time is not on our side, while an inevitable decision needs to be made. We need a replacement bridge along with corridor improvements along US 50 and 301 connecting Queen Anne's and Anne Arundel County. And time is running out. That's what the Bay Bridge Crossing study is about. Right. Really, you know, the only solution long term for to relieve tra traffic permanently at the Bay Bridge is to build a new crossing. We'll probably be reaching over 10 miles every Sunday. So time is of the essence here. We need action, we need effective action, um, and we need expedited action. A bridge being built tomorrow would already be too late. Let's revisit history. Another Bethlehem-built bridge takes its place among the greatest structures ever conceived for the convenience of the travel bent and the business-bound motorists. To that end, Maryland has, at last, united its eastern and western shores. 10,000 people gathered on this hot summer day for the five-hour ceremony that began with a 19-gun salute and closed with a parade of units from the United States Armed Forces. In 1952, the first bridge opened connecting Anne Arundel County to Queen Anne's and changed the way millions of people traveled. Beginning at Sandy Point, the bridge runs southeast, then curves eastward. Along with the bridge came intrastate route changes that were planned to shift the flow of traffic and speed the traveler on his way. 4.35 miles of steel that towers as high as 354 feet now allow 3,000 vehicles an hour to pass over the Chesapeake Bay. A feat that would take ferries almost two hours was now completed in just minutes. Those couple of minutes would drastically change life on the Eastern Shore. Ocean City and Eastern Shore tourism exploded almost overnight. It took only 15 years after the construction of the Bay Bridge for over 15,000 condominium units to be constructed in Ocean City. Ocean City quickly became one of the best vacation spots on the entire East Coast. Local businesses from the shore were now connected to Baltimore and Washington, D.C. Farmers could take their produce across the bridge in a cost-effective manner. Tourism, business, and homes began flourishing at an incredible rate. Everyone in Maryland, and more importantly, the Eastern Shore, were now connected. A bridge was built to the future. The results were almost too successful. Instant traffic backups. And in the afternoon, easily can add an hour and a half. A 35-minute trip takes about sometimes three hours. It's been nasty. <laughs> like shooting crap. <laughs> Make sure everything's done before Sunday. Sunday, you don't leave the house. I am uh, the proud grandfather of five kids that are all under the age of four. This traffic stops my grandchildren and my kids from coming to visit me because they just do not want to get stuck in the traffic. This last year, in 21, the largest backup we had was 17 miles. Did you know that the Maryland Department of Transportation accurately predicted that the average summer daily traffic volumes would reach 100,000 cars per day in 2020? In addition, recent studies show that by the year 2040, an average of more than 92,000 vehicles will cross the bridge daily with more than 125,000 crossing on Fridays and Sundays during the summer. What does this mean for traffic? It's quite simple. We will see substantial increases in daily backups. Without improvements or replacement bridge build, eastbound travelers could see backups reaching 13 miles, which would stretch all the way to Interstate 97. Westbound drivers could anticipate three mile long backups daily with 14 mile backups on Sunday during the summer that would stretch almost to Y Mills. In the fall of 2019, I believe, if I'm remembering my dates correctly, and the backup started about an hour before elementary school dismissal in Anne Arundel County. Um, the backup lasted several hours and was several miles long. And I had a grandfather who reached out to me the next day and shared that his granddaughter, who was a kindergartner, left school and did not arrive for two hours later and was desperate need of using a bathroom. What if I told you that was only the beginning? 
Studies being done in Ocean City have already told us that they will continue to see at least 8 million people every summer. But more alarming is that Ocean City is now seeing larger growth during what they call shoulder season. Their ramped up efforts to produce off-season events have some months seeing up to 11% visitor population growth on average for over 20 years. This could mean that weekend summer traffic problems could be expanding to every weekend traffic problems. In 2019, construction finished on the US 301 toll road. This project allowed a faster and cheaper connection to the Chesapeake Bay Bridge through Delaware and essentially Philadelphia for commuters and more importantly, freight transport. Since the original bridge was built, you can add US 301 to a list of growing infrastructure needs, including the development of I-97 and additional lanes to Route 50, Route 2, and Route 404. These improvements increased not only the amount of traffic, but rapidly increased the need for a replacement bridge that will support at least eight lanes. Traffic has become such an issue that the Chesapeake Bay Bridge must utilize contraflow lanes. Contraflow is most commonly utilized by opening one lane on the westbound span to eastbound traffic. This raises a number of concerns for safety as vehicles are only separated by a single solid white line. The problem of everyday congestion can be made worse by incidents and the need for constant maintenance grows out of hand. Our current bridge spans will require upgrades that will shut down lanes and possibly even an entire bridge span. It was just recently the westbound span had to undergo a deck rehab project that not only caused major traffic delays, but exposed quite literally the biggest problem with our Chesapeake Bay Bridge. The lifespan of our bridge has already been met. So I feel like this is not ideal. No, this is not ideal. This is, <laughs> this is one of those areas, that isolated areas that we talked about before where there's a full punch through. We waited two or three years, much more of this deck would look like this, and we'd have to do a complete redecking project. And how long would a complete redecking project have taken? So the redecking project takes about four to five years to complete. Uh, you could do more of that at night. However, it's about eight times as more expensive. It'd be about 230, 260 million dollars compared to 27 million that we have on this project. I think that uh, economically, this bridge could bring down Queen Anne's County. I mean, if, if people can't get to work, people can't visit families, people will leave. And we have clogged roads. If you look on those fancy app maps, um, there's just spider webs of red throughout Anne Arundel County in the 5th District. And we continue to spend millions on very short term fixes. In 2016, Governor Hogan announced the $5 million Tier 1 National Environmental Policy Act study to identify a location and explore possible funding for a new Chesapeake Bay crossing. This study listed 14 possible locations up and down the Chesapeake Bay as potential sites for a new bridge. In 2020, the Maryland transportation officials rejected 11 of the 14 potential sites for an additional crossing, saying a new span must be built close to the existing bridge to provide the most traffic relief and cause less environmental damage. Of the remaining sites, of which all are located in Anne Arundel County, with two landing in Queen Anne's County and one in Talbot, the MDTA has formally identified Corridor 7 as the preferred corridor alternative for the Bay Crossing study. Corridor 7 would be a replacement span located at the location of the two current spans. In addition, Corridor 7 covers 20 miles of infrastructure improvements from Annapolis area to Queenstown. MDTA cited once again that this corridor would provide the greatest relief of traffic, cost less due to the existing infrastructure, and potentially have the lowest overall environmental impact. It's common sense to put the new bridge where the existing bridges are now because the state owns all the property and the right of way, and it would be a quicker process than moving somewhere else. It's now time that we move forward onto the Tier 2 Impact Study. The Tier 2 study will identify specific alignment alternatives within Corridor 7 that was identified in the Tier 1 study. Tier 2 is a multi-year process and it's imperative that it begins immediately. Multiple counties and municipalities have joined together sending letters in support of funding the Tier 2 study. We recognize impacts that increased traffic volume and delays will cause on the surrounding areas in the meantime. Presently we have every county on the eastern shore 
signed up in support of a replacement bridge. And we have three counties on the western shore that have agreed, not to mention Ocean City also. The counties also agreed that the best solution moving forward is to support the infrastructure investments already made along US Route 50 301, specifically from I-97 to Maryland 404, and address the existing and future traffic capacity shortfalls by replacing the current two spans with a single new replacement bridge constructed in the same location that includes a minimum of eight travel lanes. In addition to the replacement bridge, this would also include significant roadway improvements across the entire 20-mile corridor. The current bridge at the current capacity will not last forever. In fact, we've already passed the 50-year projected lifespan of the first bridge. With this replacement bridge and an opportunity for at least eight lanes guiding traffic, Anne Arundel and Queen Anne's County will finally be able to move again traffic will flow easier and motorists will have less reasons to empty onto local roads. This replacement span is still years away, but the solution is right in front of us. It's time for residents in Anne Arundel County and Queen Anne's County to be free from their homes on the weekend, to end the hostage situation that we face on our local roads. Governor Hogan, we are asking for your support in funding this project and moving forward with phase two of the NEPA. We thank you, Governor Hogan, for taking this initiative. Let's fulfill the legacy you've started. If you believe that this is the number one priority for state projects, please reach out to the governor's office. Let him know that it's time for a full replacement bridge right here.